Hey guys, brand new podcast, and the Birdie Boy Relapse Tour is back. Corpus Christi, Lubbock, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, um, and the tour keeps going on. Paso Robles, Virgin Hotel, the Buddy Holly Center. Uh, just go to burperbert.com. I'm not going to bore you with my tour dates. I know you're here for the podcast. Something's burning's back. Something's burning's back. This is an off week for us. Next week, we got a new episode coming out. They come out every Tuesday. Go to my YouTube page and just subscribe if you could. If you don't already, if you're if you're if you're brand new to the page, subscribe. Check out Something's Burning. They're hilarious. They really are. It's just a fun, fun time of of comics getting drunk, talking shit. Comes out as a podcast as well. I hope you guys enjoy it. I really hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, today's podcast. I talked about it last week. I'll recap and talk about it. I have talked about this before. I wanted to surf. I've, I've surfed when I was a kid, but not on any capable level. Never really knew what I was doing. Knew how to duck dive. That was about it. I went surfing a number of times on tour whenever we were around waves and the ocean. I take the crew. We take a surfing lesson. We did it in San Diego. We did it in North Carolina. They were always fun as shit, but no one ever really surfed. Like We never really surfed per se, mostly because I was fat. Uh, a bridge version of what you heard last week. I lost weight. I booked a ticket with the attempts of getting up surfing, and I went to a place I trusted. Now, listen, there's a lot of trustworthy sc schools, but the school I choose chose to go to was at Turtle Bay, a place that I know is that is one of the best five star experiences you can have on the island of Oahu. Definitely in the North Shore. North Shore for me is more my energy. I like it. It's a little more hometowny, a little more small towny, little country. Great, uh, great shaved ice out in Haleiwa. But when we went to the North Shore at Turtle Bay. I'd stayed there at Travel Channel. I knew how nice it was. I knew that they renovated it and that the renovations are fucking phenomenal. I mean, it doesn't even look like the place that they shot Sarah Marshall at because that's where they shot Sarah Marshall at was Turtle Bay. We stayed in one of the bungalows. It was fucking. I brought my daughter, my sister, whole goal so that we could learn how to surf. I also brought Mans and Peter, my assistant, my cameraman. Whole goal was to learn how to surf. And I chose this place because they are the home to a surf school called the Jamie O'Brien Experience. It is a uh, surf experience, I think. Um, I know who Jamie O'Brien is. I He was one of the first vlogs of surfers I followed. The surf school at Turtle Bay, the Jamie O'Brien Experience, one of the best experiences of my life. I surfed two full days, four hours, two hours each day, and I caught a plethora of waves. They taught me how to get up, which I had always had a hard time with. I know, granted, I did work out and learn how to get up, Myself, I, I spent time laying on the floor and then getting off the floor, <laughs> which is a move. If you're going to go to the surf school, I'd do that maybe 20 times before you go, just to see if you can do it. Uh, they taught Georgia how to surf, and they taught Georgia how to surf at a level that was pretty fucking badass. By the end, she was walking the board a little bit, and she was just popping up. So if you got kids and you want to take your kids out surfing, trust that Turtle Bay is a very, very safe environment. I think at the deepest it gets is nine feet. It's usually rocks all over. They'll take you out. They'll take care of you. They put you in the lineup. They bring you in. You, they get you on waves left and right. They take care of you. Um, we had the greatest time of our lives. They were cool as fuck. They were respectable, like meaning I'm, I'm with my daughter. They were just cool. They were no curse words. They were like just badass dudes, like wholesome good dudes. Um, and and we had a fucking blast. And it was the the cherry on the top was that at the end of my stay, the very last day, the day we're flying to go do Fully Loaded, Jamie O'Brien shows up back in Oahu, hits me up. I'm like, yo, you let's podcast. I don't, I don't think he does this often. I don't think he does very many interviews. Uh, but he came in. We sat in my room. And this interview's in my room at, uh, at Turtle Bay. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, my friend, professional surfer, uh, YouTube megastar, Jamie O'Brien. <laughs> It is uh, it's a pleasure to do this with you, man. Yeah, likewise. It's I'm a fa fun. first of all, I'm a fan. Thanks. Like I'm a fan. You are the reason. That, like you got me into so many servers, into so much content that I fucking absolutely love. <laughs> and uh, you are the reason I can surf now. Let's go. This fucking this little break right here was so fun, and your school was so fucking fun. The dudes that work here. Uh, Ikaika, yeah, Ikaika. Uh, I think Stevie, Stevie, Stevie yeah. yeah, they're like the best dudes. Scotty, meet Scotty. Yeah, we yep. met all, we met all of them. They're okay, the coolest awesome. fucking guys. <laughs> and uh, and I gotta tell you, man, and I'm saying this wholeheartedly, and I and I don't know, I know you're a busy dude with a lot of things going on, but uh, your name on that surf school is like is like the Nike. It's like like it really is. Like I, I knew going out there. That it wasn't going to be insane. It was going to be fun. Like you've you've taken. There's so much I want to talk to you about. 
but you've really put fun into surfing. Like you really represent fun, the fun fuck around, have a good time. It's shitty waves, but we're still going to have a blast. And I knew that coming in. And I, that's why I booked this stay. I legit booked this stay because of that surf school, because of the Instagram posts. And, uh, and I, we surfed for two fuck two of the best days out there. We had the funnest fucking time. <laughs> we surfed a total of four hours, and and it was a blast. So thank you, man. Thank you very, very much. No worries. Thanks for cruising down. Appreciate yeah. it. And you were just in Mexico? I was in Mexico. Then I was in California, and I just got home uh, just last night. Really? Yeah. So um, I'm curious. I want There's so much I want to talk to you about, and I know surfers are notoriously, like, you guys are not, like, big self-promoters. You're not, like, you guys aren't the most, like, gossipy people but there's so much i want to talk to you about and i want to i wanted to start with like growing up here in hawaii because i find that fucking fascinating especially with a dude last name (laughs) o'brien like very white like sunburn white yeah like what was it like growing up here in hawaii uh you know i felt like it was just the best of all worlds really you know like yeah definitely last name o'brien very irish you know and and a and a a pretty um heavy hawaiian uh population you know and like And those are, you know, all my friends that I grew up with, you know, um, I think, you know, back in the day there was, there was a little, uh, confrontation, more, more confrontation. I'm fascinated by the reverse racism. Normally it's, you know, it's, it's white people being racist. And I, I have a friend, I won't say his name. I'll, I'll say it, just edit it out. Yeah. Great comedian, but he would say that growing up in Hawaii was tough. You know, I would, I wouldn't say that it was like racism i just think it's just the way we were raised it was like it was almost like tough love like like you know these they 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 peppered you up a little and like yeah and and i i think it you know built the character i am who i am today and you know i I was wondering how much of that defined you because not only that but like there was like i saw this i've I've watched a lot of your vlogs that's why i'm so psyched oh thanks appreciate it (laughs) but uh but you're you had to have your ears taped up when you were a kid to surf yeah yeah and uh, i was like i was like imagine being the one dude white kid in the lineup with fucking duct tape around your head <laughs> like that these are all things that define you you don't want your kid to go through it yeah but but as a man you go oh, i'm glad i went through it yeah no i i don't i don't you know by by any means it was just it was just tough love it was like yeah i was white and and you know like they they gave me some shit and and like and you know it just made me a better person you know it was like you know just just anywhere in the world there's always someone that's gonna you know, like pick at you and, and, and see how far they can get and see if they could piss you off, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah, there was beat up Holly day at our school, you know? And I would, I was a pretty good runner. I would just run. I'd be gone. I'd <laughs> climb trees, <laughs> you know, like, I, like whatever it was, like, you know, it was just like, <laughs> it was, it was fun growing up in Hawaii, you know? And I have so many amazing friends that I made, you know, during school, a lot of people that were used to beat me up and pick on me. They're all my friends now. And like, yeah. and it just, it just makes it so much like, it's like this, like, community a family it's like it's a it was cool growing well, up here it was when you start comedy there i mean i'll tell you the guys that were just brutal to me patrice o'neill brutal i yeah. mean and i know you comic the surfers are very insulated you guys don't know much about the rest of the world like you guys aren't like big comedy fans like you guys like what you like and you guys are so focused on your thing i sat with the uh, nathan and uh and koa yesterday yeah and and it, i was i was blown away at like how how much how big your y'all's content is but how kind of like blessed you are not to be obsessed with like the out the outside world you guys are kind of insulated if that makes sense yeah well we are on an island <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have too much things to worry about but you know honestly you get like island fever and you just want to get out of here and i think yeah. that's where we get the best of both worlds it's right when right when it's getting stagnant here we could jump on a flight and make things happen yeah what uh um how did your how did your family get to Hawaii? Uh, I guess the long story short, my dad's dad, my grandpa, was in World War II, and um, really, yeah, and uh, he was a chef on one of the the ships. And um, during the mission, they went to Australia. My grandpa met my grandma, uh, just just on like a port thing. And then uh, my grandpa's like, "Yo, I'm gonna come back here once once this is all over, and I'm gonna marry you. I'll be back." And literally, I think you he legit legitimately like rode like a boat to back to australia that's a fucking long boat ride that's a long boat ride (laughs) and he did what he said he was gonna do he he, uh moved to australia he um you know got married to my grandma and and um they ended up 
having they moved back to America, I think, I think in like Colorado yeah. and then had my dad. And then my grandma was like, yeah, I want to move back to Australia. And my grandma's like, let's go. So then they raised the kids in, in Australia and I just cutting this down. Like, no, no, take your time with it. My, my grandma was like, or my grandpa was like, Hey, I want to retire in Hawaii. That's my goal. And, um, you know, the kids were like, 18 my, my dad was 18 and really yeah and, your dad moved here at 18 in like 1960 something it's back in the day it's yeah. pretty yeah yeah well, how old are you I mean, he, I mean, he might have been 20 something but like yeah, yeah, you know yeah. like he he moved here and um they said hey we'll help set set you up with a job and um my parents my uh grandparents got my dad a job at turtle bay are you serious uh, yeah i got my dad a job uh working the pool and uh some like um just some other some other work here yeah yeah and so your was your did your did was your dad a surfer? Dad was a surfer, loved it. Loved yeah. it. He grew up with like the guys that started Rip Curl and and all all these companies in Australia. Really? They used to say these surf the Rip Curl dude's like a really interesting guy, right? Yeah. He, he had a house. Where did he have a house? Where I I, I remember being somewhere and they're like, oh, his house is right there. They're and he everywhere. was like, oh, was it is it Rip Curl that I'm thinking of? Maybe not. He but, was a wetsuit. He was a wet. Oh, uh, I mean, there's like, there's, there's a lot of those guys people. fascinate me. Yeah. Because they had like uh, Al Merrick or like, yeah. like even just local shapers that were like the guy that was big in Cocoa Beach and then, yeah. or, you know, whatever. But th those guys were like at the front of an industry. My dad, my dad was like, yo, we used to surf in our football jumpers. Like that was freezing, like Bell's Beach, Australia, like freezing. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. So he he kind of watched that whole era of like wetsuits and people, you know, wearing like these neoprene. Because like before there was like, no, you, you go out in the water and it's freezing. And then they figured yeah. out that the neoprene was like, it would it would keep you warm for a long period of time. Now, do you surf? You surf predominantly in wetsuits, right? I love wetsuits. Really? For multiple reasons. I, I love it to keep the sun off of me. If I hit the reef, it, oh, yeah. I don't get all scratched oh, up. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm warm. And there's a lot of key factors going into surfing. And like, sometimes I'm a little hot, but most of the time I'm pretty warm I'm I'm, I'm perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how old were you? Are you only child? Uh, I have a sister. Okay. Yeah. How old, how old were you when you first surfed? Do you even remember? I was like three years old and it's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a interesting one. I, I, I learned how to surf for the first time. Apparently I liked it. I don't really remember. And then, <laughs> and then the next time my dad decided to take me out while he was working lifeguard at Haleiwa and in Hawaii, it's like all our islands are, you know, created by, you know, in this volcanic area. So there's lava rocks all over the uh, beach and in certain places. And I remember taking off on this wave and I was on the front of the board and the whole time I thought I was going to crash straight into the lava rocks. And I was just crying and crying and crying. And uh, my dad thought he ruined it. He's like, oh my God, I just scared him. And I, was like, I thought I was going to hit the rocks. And I was yeah. just like frightened. And like, he was like, oh man, this is bad. And I was probably like four. And then it was like, I swear, I was like, by the time I was six years old, he was like, he came up to me under the lifeguard tower at Hollywood. He said, you want to be a pro surfer? And I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> but I don't know if that was the best answer. Like it was, it is now, but like, yeah. like then like, oh man, it was just like straight, like game time for him. He's like, let's do this. Yeah. So your dad was kind of like gate was like a little bit a force behind you to get you like towards a pro career. Yeah, I felt like my dad always wanted to be a pro surfer. Really? He loved it. He he moved to Hawaii, you know, in like the late sixties, early seventies, and just loved it. Yeah, that's crazy. And so what was so I'm trying to guess what was your generation? You're I feel like you're younger than Kelly Slater. Yeah but older than Nathan and those guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it's, it's interesting, right? I, I mean, it, it all depends, you know? I feel like a lot of my generation, uh, not really surfing professionally. Uh, they got a lot of yeah. jobs in the industry, you know? I, I, I'm sure a few of them are, you know? Um, but, but as far as surfing standards, like at Pipeline, I felt like there was like, we had our generation and then it took a long time. There was this like gap. And, and then the next generation was, Nathan Florence, John, John Florence, Koa Rothman, you know, like there was a new breed, but there was like this 10 year gap that I didn't have any Groms like trying to come up in my rankings. Like there really? was people, but it, it's, it's like, are you here for the sprint or the marathon, you know? And like the people that are here for the marathon last forever. And some, some people life's crazy. Yeah. And you, and you're, you, you don't seem like someone who ever got caught up in like drugs and alcohol. No, I just, I, I just love surfing and I love, I love, uh, you know, I, I looked at it like this. I was like, I want to be relevant forever in surfing. How do I do that? Yeah. And I'm on my way to figuring it out. Well, you're, you're the most, I mean, I, I say this, you're the most accessible surfer out there, I think. And, and I think in a sport that has 
that has like kind of it's known for its territorialness like you've made it something that looks like i mean even like i, I remember right when i discovered discovered you i was in san diego and i saw your boards in the surf shop and i was like i like it's so fucking crazy i know I'm, sh I'm sure you don't feel this way but like people that consume a lot of content you f if you watch enough about a person you feel like you're, they're your friend yeah so i was like oh i know this guy <laughs> and then i posted it and you're like oh so cool get you go go get a board go start like whatever you said and i was like I was like, fuck. I said to Leanne, my wife, I was like, I should grab one of his boards and just go out and see if I can surf today. <laughs> she was like, oh, we don't have a fucking room for it in the truck. You got to drive back to L.A. This is a fucking pain in the ass. Literally, when I got, I, when I start, we uh, got a beach house and I went, the first thing I said is I need Jamie O'Brien's boards. Yeah. So I just got two of them, the big ones. And I was like, these will be fun. They're, and it's like, and it's kind of the thing that like you go to Val Surf and that's those kids are like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got Trust me, these are the right ones for you. <laughs> how did that? How did that happen? How did you get connected with those people? You know, I, I was riding some other soft tops, uh, and I just, I just, I was, I was always having fun, and I would kind of get bagged at pipe. People were like, "Well, what are you riding that board for? Take that thing out of the lineup." And I was just like, "Ah, oh, whatever. I don't care really what people think." You know, when you grow yeah. up here in Hawaii, you kind of become numb to what people think eventually. Yeah. You know, like whatever. That's just what I was doing, and I was having fun, and and I was just digging it. And then uh, Catch Surf sent me some boards. I was like, "These are these are cool. It's fun." And it was a fun brand and I felt like it was just on brand. You know, it's like there's one thing where, you know, it's like a CBD a CBD company could come in and they could pay you. But is it on brand? Is it on to your brand? Do you feel weird about posting stuff? Do you feel weird about X, Y, and Z? Because yeah. if you do, it's not on brand. And I feel like that's a very important part being a professional athlete. So Catch Surf, very on brand, colorful, fun um you know let's push the limits of these soft boards and and take them to places they've never been but it it really put a, a big stamp of approval when you watch a guy like you riding them on pipeline yeah and by the way which like i i don't think if if i'm not mistaken that's like one of the hardest things to do is surf one of those at pipeline it's scary <laughs> uh, but but it's, it's it's like it's 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 like this uh i don't know it has dual personalities it's like you're paddling in this wave and sometimes you're like oh this is so sick so easy and then sometimes the biggest wave comes and it's your turn and then you got everyone in the lineup going are you gonna go and you're like yeah and and, and then you're in your mind you're going shit i wish i had my tacoro or you know like yeah, yeah, my yeah. hardboard because like i would execute this and ace this thing and like just ride to perfection. Like I'm like on the soft time. Like, oh my God, I'm really scared. <laughs> you know? And like, the funny thing is, is like people look at you and they go, man, you're just so casual. But like, you know, there's a million things going through your head at that time. You're like, oh my God, oh my God, like, please don't make this drop. Come on. Okay. I mean, oh my God, please come out. And then you like come out and it just looks like it was like nothing. But like in my mind, I was scared. Yeah. And I, I tell this to someone else the other day, I'm like, wherever I go and the reasons why I don't go to some places, cause I don't trust myself. Uh, I, I see a wave no matter how big and how perfect or how badass this wave is, I'm going to go. And really? Yeah. I just, it's just instinct. It's you do some of the craziest shit I've ever seen in my li entire life. Yeah. Like and, and stuff that I didn't even understand. Like we were, who was I talking to? I was talking to someone. They were like, they were like, do you know that, that video, this play it was, oh, it was in, it was in your surf school. And you like, they're like, you know, that wave that he's riding, that's the shore break at YMA. Yeah. And I was like, huh? I didn't realize that's a shore break means that you're landing on sand sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Waimea shore break. It's crazy. Dude, you're like, when you're like surfing Waimea Bay, because like, this is what usually happens. Everyone's paddling out at Waimea. It's 20 feet. It's Ko is paddling on his hardboard. Nate's paddling out. All the boys, yeah. every single one of our North Shore boys and people from all around the world. I'm like, well, I got my little 6'6 six, six catch surfboard. I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm going to go get some nuts ones in the shore break. Like, it's just like, they, they catch this 20 foot wave. And then by the time that 20 foot wave hits the shore break, it's 12 feet, but it's just, it's just so much power and just so much energy, <laughs> but I'm just looking for this one shot. It's like, it's looking in from the road. It's this beautiful YMA, uh, double up barrel shot where there's three lips in it. It's yeah. just going to eat you alive. But if you get this one photo, it's a photo that will last a lifetime. Dude, that how, like how, how often do you get hurt? Oh, hurt. I, I, you know, I, I think it's like this, you take calculated risk and, and yeah. most of the time we're very calculated and we're falling the correct way. And we're, we're, and sometimes we're just getting lucky, honestly. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you put yourself in harm's way so many times you're going to, something's, something bad is going to happen. If you're jumping on every single plane, tracking on every single swell, believe it, 
something's going to happen. And I'm kind of, pri- I'm very happy that I'm like, you know, 39 and, and I, I've, you know, I've been broke both my legs serving pipeline. I've been knocked unconscious multiple times serving pipeline. Um, I almost broke, I almost felt like I broke my back last year. Like I have these things, but like in a span of, you know, 25 years of surfing, that's not that much. You yeah. Know? But if you're chasing it, your odds are getting higher and higher. And I don't have to always chase it now. I'll let the you, Brahms chase it. You've, you've created, you've, I mean, I want to say, and I, I, I don't know, like I said, I don't know a ton about surfing. I enjoy watching surfing videos. I enjoy surfing content of my whole life. I have, but like, uh, I was watching this, uh, fluid nation or not fluid nation. What's the Kelly Slater group of guys, Robin Chato, him. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a documentary on, yep. on, uh, something. And they were saying that Rob Machado, I think it was Rob Machado, started making movies about his surf trips. Yeah. And when I brought you up, someone's like, you know, Jamie used to be like really big into making movies. And then he's the guy that transitioned into these YouTube videos. Yeah. And and you really are the person that kind of made a career out of not surfing professionally, if that makes sense. Well, it's kind of like a catch 22. Like when I was younger, I was on the QS, which is like the qualifying series. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe the closest I got was like 47th. I had the place in the top 21 or something to qualify. I got close a couple of times. They're like, make the finals at Hollywood. It's the last event of the year, make quarters. Yeah. And then I go and win the pipeline masters, which is a WCT it- contest, but I don't get no points for that. And then the yeah, same- because you are the, you are known as the dude that the best dude to pipeline. That's what, I I, that's what I, <laughs> that's what that is like. Word that is other people saying it on other vlogs on yeah. other podcasts. That's what I've heard. And pipeline is the fucking sketchiest. It's sketchy, but you know, and it's just saying like, like there, there was always this thing. And, and I remember when I was younger, the company flat out told me, Jamie, once you qualify for the CT, we're going to triple your pay. And I was really? like, I was like, but I don't want to do that. And, and, you know, like, I think at that time I was on like $60,000 a year that you qualify, we're going to, we're going to, you know, 150, you know, I'm like, oh, sick. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, but I don't want to do that. They're like, yeah, but you're, you just won the pipe masters and you got what it takes. You could be the, the guy. And I was like, I just want to make videos. They're like, nah, and they're, I'm, and, you know, and they're, they're telling me what I should be doing. And yeah. I was like, yeah, but I want to do this. And, and I, I was always looked up to Bruce Irons. And I was like, I love that he made all these videos and. And uh, he was like the free server guy. And I was like, that's the route I want to cha- uh, chase. And I ended up uh, parting ways with a uh, rip curl and going to Rusty Surfboards. And they they supported me in, in every aspect that Rusty I wanted. Rusty Surfboards has the best logo that are. Yeah, it's classic. Huh? I had one of those on the back. Yeah. I had a Wave Tools. Do you remember Wave yep. Tools? Richie Collins. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was like, I was. So we grew up in Florida and we were like really into surfing. Had surfboards go out, go out to uh, New Smyrna, but we sucked. I mean, it was really <laughs> shitty. A shitty break and so like i mean we all just sucked and yeah. <laughs> and never got good never got better never did it enough to get better but you know we're really into surfing and richie collins uh i haven't heard that name of forever but i had a wave tool sticker i had a rusty sticker i had like uh rusty rusty was just the coolest looking yeah logo yeah. Ch- channel island was like if, if you're a rich kid you got channel island yeah there was this sh- uh Shape around a new Smyrna, Charlie Baldwin, CB boards. And so I had one of those. I was like, but, uh, but so you signed with Rusty and then they were like, we support this. Yeah. Well, what was red? Did, weren't you doing like Red Bull videos? No. So I think I'm not sure when the Red Bull videos started, but Red Bull came to me. Uh, mm, it was right towards the end of, uh, my Rusty, uh, sponsorship. So it started with Rusty. Uh, I just like making videos. Whether who who was involved, they supported yeah. me. It wasn't oh, like so they were they were helping you fund were, the videos. No, they were just helping me live my dream. Oh, for they're real? helping pay the bills and oh, so and they're sponsoring traveling. you and they're like, yeah, make you just keep making videos. And I just was like, I'm a free surfer and I just made videos. Yeah. I was I was always the guy that wasn't like waiting for my paycheck. I was out there earning it, and that's how I feel I am still today. I go out there and I work hard, and um, yeah. So basically. I ended up having this vision because I was like in this weird slump where like I kind of lost some sponsors and and I think I just lost like um gosh I lost Rusty and I I all I had was Red Bull supporting me and I had no clothing sponsor and I would try and get all these clothing sponsors I try and get this sponsor a shoe sponsor no one wanted to sponsor me and I was like this is crazy. Now when you're getting sponsors are you are you the person calling on your behalf? 
Sometimes, yeah, you can have a manager or you could do it yourself. You know, it's 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 it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an interesting one. But basically, I was like trying to find a sponsor, but I had the biggest sponsor on my nose, but no one else wanted to sponsor me. It's it's surfing's the weirdest industry, and I'm sure it's just very industry uh, stuff. It's like you know, so and so, they hook you up, you get that deal. You know, you bro out, you go party with this guy, you're probably gonna get that deal. Like it's yeah. just a schmoozing kind of thing, and I wasn't like schmoozing it. I was you just weren't like, out partying. Yeah, I was like, why are these guys sponsoring me? And I, I didn't really have any idea. I just like, all right, whatever. I'm just gonna do my thing. So I was like, I want to make a movie. It's it's I'm gonna name it Who Is Job. I'm gonna tell everyone who I am. I don't know. I just I had this it. idea. And, I love it. And I made this movie, and it was it was like the biggest thing. It just instantly, it was like Jamie, Dane, Jordy, like uh jo uh, J josh uh kerr you know that it just put me right up here right where i needed to be and then a couple more years still no sponsors and then boom i was back on and then it just like my career just kind of started picking up i started making all these videos with red bull we did nine seasons of who is job like um it's on red bull's youtube channel it yeah. was their number one uh web series out of 20 and they started narrowing it down and ended up becoming like, it was me and Sheckler's show. It was like back and forth uh, with Red Bull. And then I decided, you know, maybe at the eighth season, I'm like, I should do my own thing. It's so smart. And they were like, mm. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And then I just kind of was like, all right, I'll do the last season with you guys. And they're like, okay, cool. And Cause you're I, learning all the shit. I'm learning. You're learning all of it and you're going, why? And, and you're kind of creating the content. Creating. Cause I, I watched the Who Is Job series and it yeah. was like, it was like, when there wasn't shit to do you guys were sliding down that fucking drain drain and yeah. like and so you're cr you're creating the content i was producing it yeah in in, in, in in its own way like i was coming up with all the ideas all the theories and red bull supporting i'm like let's go let's go let's go and i had a blast doing it what's holding you back from your ultimate gaming experience is it the hundreds of dollars it costs for your setup or are you busy one of those on the go type with only a minute to spare fellas level up your gaming with Backbone, the universal gaming essential that instantly enhances your gaming experiences on mobile. Dude, this thing, I, I have not gotten mine yet. I'm, I'm gonna, I wanna put this out there because this guy is waiting. This is what I've been waiting for. Sober October's coming up. I, want, I really hope that Backbone hears this and goes, because I have to fly. And when I fly, playing video games for me is a game changer. I don't need to drink. Uh, that's how I found out I needed glasses. Backbone just released the PlayStation edition of their beloved Backbone 1. The officially licensed controller for PlayStation was brought to life in collaboration with PlayStation's design team. Elegant colors, materials, the finishers are all inspired by the designs of the PS5 DualSense controller, all the way down to the transparent face buttons and visually distinctive floating appearance. I am I want this so bad. And, and usually when they're a sponsor, they send them to you. I have not gotten mine yet. And I will tell you this much. I will go out and buy it because it, it. I've seen it. It looks so sexy. It makes. It makes. It takes your gaming on your on your mobile to the next level. Simply plug in your iPhone to the backbone and enjoy console quality controls as you play console games via remote play or cloud streaming services and app store games. This is everything I fucking want. Go to playbackbone.com/slash Burtcast now to order your backbone for a limited time and get free access to over 350 console games and perks. Backbone is now the official partner of Diablo Immortal. Not only is the game specifically optimized for backbone, but you will also receive $10 of in-game perks. Find your next adventure at playbackbone.com slash birdcast. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I love this sponsor because I am someone who ruminates on ideas. I'm ruminates on thoughts, a thought that I, I can mess up a little thing, going on television and saying the wrong words about something maybe I'm working with or saying the wrong words about a friend and then I just sit and I ruminate on it and I ruminate on it and it goes over and over and over and over again in my head. And that is why therapy is awesome because you go into a therapist, you talk about that problem and in a weird way after therapy, I don't know, it takes the power away from, from that, from me. I mean, there's no better feeling then when you can find your own solutions and become a better problem solver, and a therapist can help you become a better problem solver. I've been in therapy for, oh, I don't even know. I've been in therapy forever. And I'm telling you, it, it helps it helps me uh, with my anxiety, my anxiety and my stress and, and helps me unload stress. And, and, and I, look, I've talked about this forever. If you're thinking uh, about giving 
therapy a try, BetterHelp is a fantastic option. It's convenient, it's accessible, it's affordable, and it's entirely online. You don't have to get in a car and drive in traffic and wait in a waiting room and see the guy before you come out as you go in. All of that is for me causes so much stress. You can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey, and if you want, you can switch therapists anytime. So easy. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can be there for you. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Bert today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash Bert. Yeah, and then you decided to move on and just do your own YouTube stuff. Four years ago, probably. I think I was there for it. Yeah. I think, I, I think I, that's when I found you. And I started going like, <laughs> and it was so fun. It's so fun. I love, and I, I don't, like I said, the surfing community is kind of insulated and you guys really just mostly care about surfing. Yeah. <laughs> like it's kind of crazy because comics just care about comedy. It's, I mean, I'm leaving tonight to go to Brandon, Mississippi to do this. Like it's a tour I do. It's called Fully Loaded and it's with like 10 of, 10 of the best comics in the business. And our favorite thing to do is just get on a bus drink and gossip <laughs> it's like our favorite thing well all, i guarantee you the first thing we'll talk about is sam rell's new special like our buddy just put out a special on netflix yeah he's like the best one of the best joke writers in the business and so i guarantee you we'll just sit on thing and quote our favorite jokes yeah that's funny and so so but like i can't get any of them interested in surfing at all yeah. like but i love discovering something and then just fucking deep diving and being like like it was so fun to like to do the math and then f to watch a couple of your videos and be like, oh, this seems funny shit. And then I learned that uh, uh, Waimea is the name of the river. Yep. And that's the river you guys dig yep. out and yep. surf the river. And I was like, oh, shit. And then I was like, and, and, and it, but it was, it was just, you had such great presence. And it was like, you looked like a guy who had been hosting television for years. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's fun. I just, I, I, I um, just love making videos. I love filming. I love working. I can't just sit in my house. I'm just like constantly like, I got to go. Oh, I'm sitting I here do? in paradise and all I've been doing is like, I got to do podcasts. Yeah. I got to bring the equipment down. I got to do podcasts. Most people just want to sit in the sun and, and get a sunburn and yeah. drink my ties at the pool. Yeah. I did that yeah. yesterday. <laughs> I got Cora Rothman blackout drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, it's like four years Pretty much to this day, you know, it was like, I was like, what's going to happen? And that's the thing. You got to trust your instincts, trust yourself and go for it. It was what first year, 100,000 subscribers. I was like, whoa, this was sick. And yeah. then, and then I, the YouTube revenue started making enough money that I could actually pay someone without it coming out of my own pocket. I would pay them with their the YouTube revenue. I was making like, you know, two, two grand a month. I was like, sick. I'll, I'll sign someone up. I'll, I'll pay them, you know, 2,500 bucks a month, three grand a month to help me out, you know? And then, and then boom, I was like. Oh, making six grand a month on YouTube revenue. And I was like, I want two guys. Yeah. You know, I want, I want to, I want to deliver the best possible product on YouTube, family friendly, user generated content. I want, I want to own the widest and biggest demographic in surfing. And I remember actually in about the third year or second year, I'm like, Cole, you guys should start a uh, thing. They said that yesterday, sitting right out there, they're like, no, J <laughs> Jamie pulled us aside and was like, you need to start a, a, a vlog. You got to start a vlog. So I created my competitors, but this is good, right? <laughs> it's great. No, well, it's you, great because it's like I watch a bunch of you. I, you're the reason I found Nathan. Yeah. And so like you guys had this like Nathan. Nathan's a really fascinating dude because I got a I got a I got a hint of the uh, like of of like party Nathan yesterday, which yeah. I've never seen. I because see Nathan's that. pretty brand friendly. Yeah. Top to bottom, when you hang out with him, when he does his vlogs. Yeah. And then I, I like yesterday at the table those guys got loose and oh, i was yeah. like i was like interesting that's 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 who i know yeah. i know i know john john that same person that nobody knows <laughs> i mean nathan and, yeah. and cola know yeah <laughs> but but yeah. but yeah you but you didn't it's like look man i said this to them uh the only reason i have a podcast is because of rogan yeah. and he pulled me aside and he was like hey man you need to start a podcast and i was like um i thought i was like i'm better i'm better as a guest and he said, just, no, start a podcast. He goes, go go to the store, buy the podcasting equipment. And I bought it. And I just, and I tried to start a podcast. And I just didn't, couldn't do it. And then my best friend came in to my house. It was an Easter morning. Uh, you don't know any of these people, but like Tom Segura is my best friend. Joey Diaz is there. My dad was there. And uh, 
Tom walked in and and he hooked up all my equipment in my man cave and he hit record and he handed me a microphone, Joey a microphone, my dad a microphone and he goes, this is your first podcast. He goes, don't edit it, just post it. <laughs> and I got 25,000 listeners that morning Sick. and I and I was like, and immediately, and I don't know if you're into this shit, I'm fascinated by like on Libsyn, by the way, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not certain why you don't have a podcast because podcast we'll talk about podcasting ever that that revenue yeah. is fucking i heard i know different that's a different avenue but i remember going into my libsyn and checking uh where people were listening to my podcast and i was like fuck i was like i'm, I'm big in in ohio like well, that's crazy yeah. i'm really big in Can canada and i remember going into a meeting of my agents i did my podcast a year i was like can i give you guys my podcast breakdowns because i think you guys i think where there's a couple of markets we could book that people aren't thinking about oh wow and we started booking based on that and i was like it i loved the metrics of it i yeah. loved you know and then i got into youtube because of uh this guy casey neistat do you know him yeah casey's the man casey's the man have you ever have you ever done a, a, a I've, thing with him i've done a few videos casey reached out to me and was like dude i love your youtube channel i would love to meet up and hang out casey changed my life because casey's great. around the same time i got fired from travel channel I, was, I used to work there's a network called travel channel back in this i'm sure it's yeah here. i heard a travel channel we, we used to do it episodes down here all the time and uh and i found casey and i started going i i, can, I know how to edit i know how to make my own thing and so i started a vlog and then i started making content and i think that is what made my instagram good is i knew i knew how to edit and shoot and cover things but but becoming a fan of those guys was like um it was it's and that's when i found you i was like i love deep diving shit yeah and being like fuh, 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 fuh. and then all of a sudden you show up in someone else's video yeah. and i'm like oh ah, it's the best man yeah you, okay so so here here's a perfect example like whoever's listening out there it's like oh these guys are making all this money off of youtube but like for me i'm a guy that takes it takes money to make money you know and, yeah. I, and i understand the game right so it's like it's like how can i leverage my sponsors how could i leverage everything outside of this i'm not trying to like make a, a fortune off of youtube i'm just using that money to pay my filmers what they deserve they're going to work hard for me they're going to deliver the perfect product for yeah. me and we're a winning formula like i i've at the most i've had i had two filmers full-time and a full-time editor we pay for you know everything we could possibly pay for to make it the best and that's what we are and and i mean that's just my own opinion but I value our content the very best on YouTube and surfing. And yeah. we do not treat our YouTube channel like a garbage can. Our YouTube channel is is everything, you know, and more than what we've been working for. Like yeah. we did the same thing with Fully Loaded. I went, whatever money I'm making, put it back into the tour. You're, you're only successful if the product's good. Yeah. And if the product sucks, people change the channel. Why not put it back into the thing? The thing? Yeah. You, you want to deliver them your best version yeah you know i'm not saying that's not you but like like i i want i want i want to portray myself to the next generation i want kids to look up to me i want parents to allow their kids to watch me i want i don't want to grow with my demographic and bye bye jamie o'brien i want i want everyone to be involved like you know from a, a three-year-old kid that could watch my vlog to you know their grandma and watching it with their kid yeah and and well, so many people are like wow thank you for being user-friendly well, it's, it, I mean, look, man, I wish if I could put the toothpaste back in the tube, I would have started off. <laughs> no, you're good. I would have started off different in my in my career because there is a big I'm one of my one of the best comics in the world is a guy named Brian Regan. And what's amazing about his shows is families show up yeah. like the whole family shows up. And so look, you, you got to make what, what's authentic to you. And what's authentic to me is always going to be a little dirtier. But uh but I look at Brian's career and I go, I would that would be pretty cool to be able to do a fucking 3 p.m. Sunday show, 5 p.m. Sunday show, 7 p.m. Sunday show, and then do a 9 p.m. Sunday show and, and make four fucking nuts in yeah. one in yeah. one. I mean, it would be great. Yeah. Dude, I'm curious. I'm curious how much your business has changed because I see I see you I see you g growing as a brand, and I wonder like. Is it still just you, or do you do you have a management team? Do you have an agent? Like, who's bringing offers to you? Are you are you on the phone all day long that you're not filming? You know, honestly, I I have I haven't had a manager until about last year. I brought someone on board, um, and it's it's been it's been whatever. But a lot of stuff gets you know somehow filtered back into me. Like someone will somehow figure out my email, or they'll they'll DM me, and sometimes really? I won't check it. And I don't I don't know. Like somehow 
they they find me and uh it's just it's a, it's a lot of work it's, it's so much because it's like you need to um you need to have a normal life which is which is no i'm not saying it's hard and like but you, uh, you 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 strike me as a tad bit of a workaholic like i'm a workaholic i don't stop i, I don't stop either and i don't find it i have this is no, not I have, good i have no i have no i have no uh I have no empathy for those who can't work the same hours I do. I, I mean, I, I tried. I, I remain silent. I had a. I remember one time I was working with someone <laughs> who said I can't do that. I'm going to spend time with my kids on uh, on Friday, and I went. Now I'm, I'm done working with that person. I was like, I was like, spend time with your fucking kids. The fuck? What are we? Do? This is business we're talking about. I have gotten so. I've. I, I'm so ag- aggressive about work. I cannot help it. Yeah. But I also, it's like. I've, I have a lot of fun doing it. And so like, I, I like, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm sit, I, what, who would want to be sitting in the water right now when I can talk to a dude I've been watching hours of, <laughs> hours of, yeah. and kind of pick his brain about yeah. how he runs things. Like, I'm curious, do you have a development slate? Do you have like, like, I'm curious if you brought in like a, like a producer, like a producer, produce like a Hollywood producer, where things could go. If you got a manager, an agent in Hollywood, what things could happen, or if it would ruin the brand. Because what's cool about you is you're so authentic. Yeah, you know, there's so many questions I have. Sheesh. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, we got a someone, phone call. Yeah, someone want a first time caller. <laughs> They've been really cool at this resort. Yeah. I burned my lip yesterday uh-huh. and it swole. Have you ever oh. had a swollen lip from sunburn? Uh, yeah, but usually I get a blister. No, it's blistering yeah, now. Okay. It's blistering now. But they, I put it on my Instagram and they called. They're like, can we send something for his lip? <laughs> they've been really, they're fucking. That's awesome. Let's make this call quick, Pete. I got home. We we realized that our jacuzzi had a leak and we we're like looking at on the cameras while we were gone. And we came home, the jacuzzi is just like dead dry empty i was like oh no and the, and the motor is like we're still like eh. i'm like oh no <laughs> you know i think i went out i think i went out on a boat with your one of your your contractor yeah yep he threw out his back you know that oh recently uh, on the boat oh no yeah. oh that day yeah that day oh wow yeah he uh he uh very cool dude <laughs> yeah, it, he's a man v- very cool dude but uh but what was it like i mean I, I know i mean i know how i drove, drove by your house what like what's it like where people know where you live cuz that happened to me and it was okay for a while and then i had to move so i put my house on the internet <laughs> i have everybody to blame but myself oh dude <laughs> i did the same fucking thing but yeah. but you live on like possibly one of the busiest streets in hawaii yeah so so basically it's it's like this every every day jamie yeah. jamie come outside I'm your biggest fan. And then, and then you got, and then it's like, sometimes you hear like, fuck you, Jamie O'Brien. <laughs> like, it's just like, you just get like a range of people, you know? And like a yeah. lot of, a lot of them are kids. Just so just looking at the house, taking selfies in front of the house. They, they, they really want to meet me. And I'm like, Shh. I, I usually go downstairs when I'm at home. Like if I'm like super tied up, I, I just feel bad. I'm like, all right, they, they, dude, this will make their like dream if I come down and take a picture with them. It's super simple, super easy. But yeah. is it my forever home? And that's the thing that you had to deal with. I don't think so. I think I want to keep the house forever, yeah. but I don't want to live there forever. So, yeah. you know, and, and my personal goals is to work hard and buy a beautiful place somewhere else with a coastal and ocean view. On Hawaii, in Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever leave Hawaii? No. If you could live in one other place, where would you live? Uh, and it can't be near it can't be near waves, and it can't be Colorado. <laughs> no waves. No waves. Oh man, I really love snowboarding. Do yeah. you really? Yeah. So I think I could do a little mix of like snowboarding and like you know lake time. You know, maybe lakes are pretty fucking awesome. They're beautiful. The lakes in Utah are fucking next level. Well, the snow in Utah is probably pretty next level. At Utah's times too. pretty cool. Yeah, but I'm not sure if that's the place for me. I don't know. You'd fit in. I would honestly, dude. You in a second, you'd this, fit in. This very is really quickly. wacky. I would love to live in like Japan or something. Really? Yeah. I just love I the food, the culture, the people, the yeah. snow. There's some good waves at times. Like, really? It's it's kind of. I mean, I, I can't surf, right? So, but the snow is great. Yeah, and the culture great. and the food. The food's fucking phenomenal. What's life about, right? People, food, and 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 <laughs> the, what's have you been to Japan? I've been to Japan. What's fucking crazy about Japan is like. You go uh, get on their subways and everyone's silent. They're, just, silent. Uh, they're holding hands and just silent. And then you get, then you go to Vietnam. I said, if it's it, going to Japan is like, 
is everyone's to themselves, no one's talking, and it's very polite. You go to Vietnam and it's like they're putting their fingers in your mouth. That's how aggressive it is. Yeah. Like they're like, what do you need? You, 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 you. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, oh. Yeah, anxiety. I get yeah. anxiety. Yeah. What is, what tell, I, I'm always curious about, because you guys travel to the coolest places in yeah. the world. What are your favorite places outside of Hawaii? Um, well, I, I definitely like to do like snowboard trips, like a little cat trip. Cause I don't get to go, it's not like I can go snowboarding every day. If I could go jump on a cat for three, four days or five days and yeah. like get my snowboard fixed, just one trip. Because like usually when the snow is good, the waves are good. Um, so. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I think. Because your big summer, your big uh, season is this winter. Yeah. I think Canada has some great snow and I think, uh, Japan, Alaska is pretty fucking uh, insane. Japan. I never been to Alaska, but, I'm um, going to Alaska for four days. Oh, that's awesome. At the end, I haven't. People don't know that, but I've announced it. Yeah, but I'm doing a tour there. That's awesome. I Exciting love Alaska. Stuff. I've never been there. I got to go. Do you think, do you th ever think, had you grown up in the mountains, would you be a professional snowboarder? I'd like to think so. Like? I don't know. Just, just, I think my mindset, I just, I, 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 I mean, you never know, man. If you're, if you're, if you're growing up around it and you you spend X amount of hours into it, you're going to get really good at it. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say to you. Like, you're like, oh my God, I found this love for surfing and I'm, I'm this old. I wish I would have got into it when I was younger. But like, that's why I always tell people, I go, I go, Hey, glad you found surfing now. It, it, that's what life's that. Oh, just shut the door, Pete. So I think the most important thing about life is finding new things that kind of, that, that like bring you joy in life. And that's, yeah. that's what makes life so rad. Like, you fall in love with surfing. You 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 deep dive it. You 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 want to get good at it. You go all the time. You suck, but it's so fun. And like, just finding something electric in your life at any point of your life is amazing. Oh, I like I like the um, I like the fitness aspect of it because one of the things that drives me nuts is working out with just working out and getting on a treadmill and not enjoying just truly enjoying something. But what I love is you know. I was checking my whoop and my strain was like a 12 surfing. And I was like, that was, I w was out there for two hours, you know, but it's fun as fuck. And there's this like exhilarating feeling when, you, when, you know, f th this is this, uh, it's so weird to tell a s professional surfer about what I like about it. Mm -hmm. But like the part where you feel the board slide and it feels like it slide out from under you, but you're on top of it and you really ride something down and yeah. you go like, whoo. Yeah. Like it's so, it's such a cool feeling. The best way I could explain it. And people ask me, can you explain this? Like, it's like, you know, well, like explaining like that feeling times like, like a hundred. Yeah. It's like going down uh, one of those water slides, a vertical water slides where you like levitating off the ground. You're like, Oh my God. <laughs> and then it just clicks like that. Yeah. That's, that's how surfing pipe is. So you're getting that little, little feeling of what we get at the ultimate rush, you know? And like, that's your rush. And then slowly, but surely the longer you surf, the more rush you're going to want out of this sport. How often do you, how many boards do you have? Uh, I mean, I, I'm kind of a, um, a horde when it comes to boards. I probably got over a hundred and, 20, 150 boards. So how how often do you get paddle out on a board and go, this is the wrong board? You know, I've honestly dialed it in pretty well with my shapers, um, especially at pipeline or any wave of consequence. I really? always, I, I get on the board. I'm like, this board's amazing. Really? Yeah. And so what? how do you, like, I don't know if I could tell you what's great about a comedy club. Like there are some really cool things about a comedy club where you go, that was, they don't make them like that anymore. Yeah. You know, like, uh, but like, how how specific are you on like, uh, on on pipeline? How many different boards do you have to surf, surf pipeline? I probably have about twelve to fifteen boards that are just just made for pipeline. Here's a weird thing, right? So growing up at pipeline, you break a lot of boards. The older you get, the more waves, the better waves you get. You you start like figuring out your your yourself in the pecking order. Yeah. And there's always going to be someone, you know more superior in your mind it's all it's all up to what you think you know and, and respect levels but like slowly but surely i start moving up the pecking order and now i'm up there with all the boys and it's super fun we got this tight community it's so fun i love surfing with everybody out there and uh you end up getting the waves you want and you end up not really breaking any boards last year i broke maybe two boards really so my shape my shaper asked me the other day he's like hey you gonna trade these boards in and i was, I was like nope <laughs> really yeah I, I i ride i get lucky to to ride some of the best waves in the world and a lot of them i'm making nine nine out of ten i'm making wow so so how 
talk to me for a second about pipeline and, and the, the hierarchy of how people get i know it's like they were saying it's the most <clears throat> most controlled chaos or the most the mo but like how how crazy is it when you get in that lineup like are there people that show up and you go and you immediately go well that guy gets i mean that guy goes before me definitely kind of yeah um they could just foul out and you're like ooh, okay you know, really? you, you feel it you feel like, your place you, could you but, say a name but like, you could be respectable too and say hey you going because sometimes they're not they're, that's not the way they want and, and yeah. i have a different idea of like i'm, I'm a risk take a, a little bit gnarlier one that he might not want you know or maybe he wants it like you just never know so is that how it works you get out there and, and like and like there's like how, are there like a hundred dudes out there i would say on average there's about 60 plus 60 on a, on a crowded day 80 okay. guys out 60 guys let's say yeah. there's 60 guys yeah how many guys are how many guys d deserve to be out there oh like, uh, i mean everybody should be out there if they want it but you know? but like how many guys are you like these are the guys that these are the legit guys that Just run. 20, 20 20 okay so then out of that 20 like you're probably friends with all 20 of those yeah and out of the 60 you probably don't know all 60 right no okay so out of the 20 like like who who have you ever been excited that paddles out to the lineup and you're like oh shit he's out today that's gonna be fun so so there's a people that you like surfing with and then there's a people that you're maybe not so like you know but yeah. it all depends on the day though there, there, there could be a day right and like um let's just say it's like me john john nathan koa maybe bruno koa smith um I, the, the, the list the list keeps going yeah right um and uh Tamayo Perry paddles out. You know, he's he's like, when I grew up, he was my superior out, out of pipeline. And, you know, I looked up to him like, or like, uh, you know, he paddles out. I'm like, Tamayo wants it bad enough. He could probably just tax me. Like, and it's my turn. But yeah. usually we got a really good. He'd just be like, I want this one. And you go, yep. He'd be like, I'm going and look right at you. And he'll just, he'll just mentally, <laughs> <laughs> mentally damage your confidence. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, so, so, you know, like, and, and weirdly I've heard that, you know, Nathan and Koa kind of feel the same about me. And like, they were saying but, that about you but, yesterday, but, but I feel the same about them too. You know? And I, I feel like we got a really cool, fun community, you know, like, you know, Eli Olsen and like, there's just so many cool people and it's such a fun place. Like, You'd think like, oh, surfing pipeline, super heavy and super gnarly. Yeah. Everyone knows when it's their turn. Everyone. And and sometimes you got to establish it a little bit. Like, so how was your last wave? Just to let them know that you know that they caught the last wave. And then you're like, oh, you missed that one. Okay. Because I'm going to go for the next one. You paddle for that wave. You oh, know? so there's so, like a little language dance. A little bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some, sometimes I, I will, I will uh, paddle for a wave that maybe it wasn't my turn in that, in that like thing. And then I'll be a little fluster with me. And, uh, you know, it's just. There's just so much going on. And, and you know, I'll be completely honest. Surfing is a very greedy, selfish sport. And, and you know. Because it's it can only be you on the wave. Yeah. Me, me, me. I, I, I. Um, yeah. But uh, it's it's great, you know. And and the, the one thing I could take away from, right, like living at Pipeline, uh, hectic. Uh, when the waves are on, everybody's, you know, everybody's down there. It's me, me, me. I, I, I'm going to get the wave of the day. Did you see my wave? And I'm. I am a hundred percent involved in all this too. Yeah. You know, like who's getting the wave? Like, did you see my wave? You put your hands up after you got the crazy wave. Like it's just this weird feeling and and um it's very selfish. You know, but there's there's well, so you're talking about I mean, you're talking to a guy who for a living performs with his friends and people are like, Hey man, uh like I mean like legit Rogan. There's a there's a a weird thing. Like Rogan will be like uh show there's an old school. He I mean we haven't seen him in LA in a while because he moved. But you'd go to a show and he'd be like, uh, he'd be like, uh, you're going to go up? I say, yeah. And he goes, all right, I'll close the show. And you, you're just like, yeah, you're going to definitely close the show. I'm not going after you. I'm not like, yeah, but like, but there's times when people will be like, you know, man, I got to go. I got to get there. Like there's, and there's old school dick moves. Like where people, this is the, where people will bump you and they go, Hey man, I'm going to go before you. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, fuck, this guy's got high energy. Like, I don't really have that problem because I take my shirt off. So I think everyone, no one wants to go after me. Yeah. Like not, I mean, everyone. There's a lot of people that can follow me, but why do you take your shirt off? Uh, Relatability. Yeah, no. I I, uh, I think I I started doing it. I saw you had abs. Was that real? No, no. Uh, when I was a kid. No. Oh. Yeah, when I met my wife, I did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all had. Uh, most of us all had some sort of. Ad. They're still there, but you can't really see them. <laughs> that's no, for, I, that's my struggle. I. Uh, 
I I took it off. I took it off the first time to remind myself that it should be fun because yeah. I was like, I, it was you know Thursday night in Columbus, and you got two more shows Friday, two more shows Saturday, a show Sunday, and you're just like, huh, I'm, I'm, I'm you're making twenty five hundred dollars maybe if I was making that at the time, probably fifteen hundred dollars, and no bonuses, and uh, it's gonna be a long week, and they're not, and I'm not selling tickets. And you're like, I need to remind myself that there are people to here that are here to have a good time, and this should be fun. And I can't just because I miss my family doesn't mean I get to throw my put throw a temper tantrum. <clears throat> yeah. So I rip my shirt off. I used to rip it off. I used to rip it off and kill a beer and do my thing and then throw it back on. And one night I forgot to put it back on, and this lady was like, "I went to go put it back on like 15 minutes in." She goes, "Keep it off," <laughs> and I was like, "All right." And I kept it off. And a guy I really respected came up to me and he was like, "Dude, you just did an hours." worth of material with your shirt off he was like i couldn't do a joke with my shirt off <laughs> and then weird in a weird way it became like a branding thing i think people now know me as the shirt the guy that performs shirtless yeah. and and i and i'm really comfortable shirtless yeah. uh, oddly enough even though i don't look like i should look shirtless but i don't give a fuck <laughs> yeah so yeah i don't know i think you've like i like you were saying earlier i think certain things feel authentic to you yeah and growing up in florida that just was like an authentic thing to take your shirt off. Yeah. I yeah, don't know. It's hot. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> Guys, it's no secret that women love beards. Come on. Look at this face. And we love growing them. I love growing a beard. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done as an adult, or at least trying to. But having a great looking beard requires work. Whether it's beard growth oils, styling products, or top of the line trimmers, there's a small army of products required to grow your best beard. That is so true. Luckily, Beard Club is here to help. Thank God. As the leader in Beard First Men's Growth and Grooming, Beard Club delivers quality hardware and consumables that help you get a better, thicker, and fuller-looking beard. I have messed up my beard so much. I look at old pictures of myself. I wasn't oiling it. I wasn't grooming it properly. I was trimming it wrong. I was using crappy trimmers, and I regret those pictures. And my regret the most is that's when I was skinny, and I looked good, but that my beard looked like crap. Head to beardclub.com slash Bert. Take the beard quiz and use my code Bert at checkout. They'll recommend a grooming kit that is tailored to your beard's needs. The highlight of the grooming kit is the PT45 trimmer. It's truly a beard-changing device. There's no painful hair pulling. It's sturdy as hell and has amazing battery life. It's the same trimmer that NBA player James the Beard Harden uses. Dude, if, if he uses it, I trust that guy. And yes, he's also an investor in the company. The growth kit features sprays to strengthen and moisturize your beard, hairs, oils that prime follicles for optimal growth, and derma roller that rejuvenates dormant hair follicles. Dude, when you find one of those hair follicles, this guy's just got a little bump and it's got like nine little follicles in it. Thank God for this. No matter what type of beard you have, Beard Club has the perfect kit to fit your needs. Beard Club, over 2 million beards served. Grow your best beard today and take 20% off your first order when you go to beardclub.com slash Burt. Use the code Burt. That's beardclub.com slash Burt, and the code is Burt for 20% off your first order. I get excited when I see, you know, a new post, and I because, you know, the people you subscribe to show up in your, that's the first videos. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, cool, man, this is awesome. It's fun to it's, watch. Well, it's, it's, man, and I maybe it's, maybe I'm a, I'm a weird type of dude who's like, I I I'm, I know there are probably aren't a lot of dudes turning fifty that are into like watching content. I guess, yeah. But like, I fucking, it's better than television for me. Yeah. You know, I I honestly I I really like YouTube. Um, I think it's a really cool platform. I think what they did in the last like five years clean cleaned up YouTube and just, yeah, you know, like they're trying to make it a better better user friendly place. And it was the greatest thing I ever did. I started a YouTube channel four years ago. I, I I can't even believe where my career is at. And it's, and it's a big thank you to, you know, like Red Bull for always believing in me and getting me hyped into the Who Is J.O.B. show to spiral in and off to my own thing. And like, that's a cool thing about life. It's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm as relevant as I've ever been in my life. And, and I'm 39. When I was like 20, they're like, kid surfing career is done at 24. Everyone retires. Really? Yeah. Like freaking Kelly Slater. Still dominating. He's a, he's a fascinating dude. Yeah, he's a like I, I, I mean I he because I'm from Florida. We all knew who he was. Yeah, he was like 
I don't know. But it's interesting to see that guy. There's a lot of guys that are like those, like like Laird Hamiltons that are fucking. And Shane just, Dorian. Shane Dorian, dude. Yeah. Him on Rogan's the best. Yeah. Shane Dorian is, I, I saw a video of Shane Dorian taking this kid out to Jaws for the first time. Yeah. And like got him aboard and was yeah. like, come on, are you ready? Oh, Seth Moniz. Yeah, yeah. It was such a cool video. Yeah. I was like, we don't have that. Like I, you know, we talk, I think I said this one thing. I can't like bring a boy on stage and be like, take your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> come on. You're coming with me now. No, it's, it's, it's surfing's rad. And so, I'm just love, I love, I'm loving every minute of it. Traveling the world, living, living my best life. Where do you think you'll be at 50? What do you think you'll be doing? Oops, sorry guys. <laughs> uh oh my god are you watching videos on how to edit videos <laughs> <laughs> you're watching videos we we just so my this is my team my uh we had a my cousin's fucking awesome and he has been my editor for my he's been a, a lot more than an editor to me but he did edit my videos for a long time and he got to a point where he was like man I, I, he said you know i want i want to focus on my own shit yeah. and i you can't blame someone for doing that so we're trying, we don't have someone editing videos. John's our shooter. John shoots all the content. And so John's like, I'm pretty sure I can edit. So we shot some drone stuff. And and then this whole time he's on his computer, I'm going, what is he doing? And then all of a sudden he goes, how to edit a video. <laughs> <laughs> how many people are on your team? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what the fuck? They keep calling about my fucking lip, I think. Oh, my your God. Your daughter is drinking at the at the pool bar. <laughs> so what's your day look like after this? Ah, uh, the jacuzzi guy is supposed to show up to figure out what. You the, live 10 minutes from here. Yeah, 10 minutes. That's great. We're going on a hike to, we were going to do two, one or two hikes. Yep. The one at Sunset. Yep, right behind my house. Is that good? The yeah, Sunset it's, it's short and sweet. Short it's, sweet, it's, it's, it's a good view. Epic view. Okay, yep. all right, good. That's yep. one we're doing. And then we're going to go to Haliva and get shaved ice yeah but you do it after four o'clock because the traffic is just horrendous going that way right now for real yeah they're doing all this road work they should be doing it at night but they're doing it in the middle of the summer in the middle of the day that's kind of crazy yeah so yeah well we're going to do the hike and then we were we were going to go to holly even get shaved ice and then come back get on our flight but uh i don't know we'll see maybe we'll get shaved ice on our way to the airport yeah um so yeah, what I mean, what else? You, you, what? I, I want to know a little bit about like the podcast and like kind of like your 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 out your idea and what's happening with this. Well, I find I mean, here's the thing: like, I find when whenever a, any surfer's ever been on Rogan, it's such a great contra, a great great yeah. conversation. Uh, Shane Dorian, Kelly Slater, uh, 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 Laird Hamilton. Like, it's I, I just I just feel like you guys, you don't. You don't try to oversell things. You don't try to, you guys have a, a humility to you that, that is, I find is very connective. Yeah. And so I, I've always said, I don't know why you guys don't have podcasts because so many people are interested in surfing. Yeah. And, and that doesn't have to be the only thing you talk about. But I talked to those guys yesterday. I was like, I don't know why you guys don't have a podcast. And they're like, they're like, yeah, Koa might be one of the funniest dudes I've ever been around. He, I was I've never enjoyed someone so quickly, <laughs> so epic. acutely. I, I I I got such a kick out of him, but but I think that I know for me, my podcast is is an extension of my social media. Yeah. So if I have like, you know, there, it just seems like a natural progression for a guy like you. So so say I was like, okay, I want to get in this podcast space. Well, yeah. what, so then here's here's where you have to look at. Yeah, so I do tell? an interview. I do an interview based show. <laughs> yeah, that's this one, and then I do a one with another guy, Tom Segura, who's a, a this overweight guy, kind of trying to shepherd him through life. And so, so I love that you're not even giggling. You're like, I have no idea who Tom Segura is. The so he's like my best friend. We're both comedians. Okay. And we do Two Bears One Cave is one of our podcasts. I saw this, and yeah. that's just two of us. Yeah, and then this one is me interviewing people. So this one. It depends on the guest is how your views get. Like this will be a pretty big one because when it goes on YouTube, uh, your name, it'll show up in the algorithm of people to follow you. Yeah. And then people will be like, God, man, I'm kind of curious. I've yeah. never really seen a full length interview. on. I don't, you. I don't really do any. I yeah. usually just say no. Oh, for real? I don't know why. I just, uh, I, 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 I love, I love, <laughs> like I saw, uh, there's a few people I've seen on interviews where I go, oh, I've been dying to hear this person talk. Yeah. Baltazar Getty. Yeah. Baltazar Getty. I'm like, 
I mean, I, I, ever since Lord of the Rings, everyone's I've been a fan of the guy. But growing up or moving out to L.A., the Getty Museums are everywhere. And, yeah. and he's just a and he's a fascinating guy who kind of navigated Hollywood and got out on the good side. Yeah. Still works. Really talented. And uh, he showed up on uh, on um, Dr. Green Thumb or, you know, the guy from Cypress Hill. Yeah. Uh, Be Real's podcast. Yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck. I've never really heard about Scars at Getty talk much yeah. like i've never heard him yeah. interview and then they're friends they've known each other forever and and Balthazar was like into music and, and then you're like whoa so that for me something like this if i found this if you were on rogan i'd be like oh shit it's a yeah. go-to so this so that's the benefit of an interview driven show and you have so many connections in this industry and you are doing things at such a level that kind of do, isn't really doesn't even exist in this industry in my opinion yeah that i would be fascinated to have you sit down with you know any of the fucking any of the guys that start a wet like anyone in this business this business is doing something i would be fascinated but you have to be it has to be something like you said like the reason rogan's so good is he's the most curious human being you'll ever meet in the world mm -hmm. he asks questions and he's the kind of guy that asks them with his face and goes so uh when you run are, are you worried about your knees yeah when you drink tequila what's your recovery on your whoop like he's really a curious guy yeah you could also just team up with another dude yeah and just weekly just two of you sit down talk about whatever's going on and that's super easy but, but i kind of think that the way your brain works you'd already know what you'd want to do on a microphone for an hour a week i always thought like i mean obviously poopy's got his little shittiest podcast but dude the, the dynamic duo between me and poopy's is mind-boggling poopies is but, one of our favorite human beings alive but keeping up with poopies is is a whole new thing you know whether he's whether he's gonna show up to film or whether he's you know he's he's one of the most epic people i ever met in my life I, try, I, try, I, I can't celebrate that guy enough i got a phone call from him the other day try try control this kid he You're is worried. Well, I discovered him on, on your channel. Yeah. I discovered him through you. I discovered him on my channel too. <laughs> for for all the best. But like, you know, he's d d just, he's wild. And there's yeah. a reason why he is on Jackass. And he's a reason why he's one of the main characters. This is him. But It's so him. Yeah. I, 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 I think that would be the best one ever. But I, I don't, it was hard enough filming with him for the Who Is Jovi thing. It was like a loose cannon on I the bet. show. But yeah. um. <laughs> he is he's he's just a he's a he's a very authentic pure spirit and he's not anything other than what he is me and poopies have the most crazy stories ever i imagine but i have a lot of crazy stories i don't know i i just just it's fun i like telling stories i and, think and i, I think, like exaggerated them a little bit just because like to put a little twist on them yeah you know like i don't know it's like you, like how you say like joe rogan talks he's very invested in it it's like I feel like I just like I'm like reliving through the moment when I'm like talking about like this shit I did with poopies poopies uh <laughs> po I get a kick out of him he yeah. lived with you for a while oh my god did he ever dude these guys are gnarly yeah they, they would break all the rules and I was like yo poops I'm gonna like help you out like put you up in my house like you could live here for free um and uh you know you could take all that Red Bull money that they're helping you with the show to like film with us and just save it you know and it was just like it was just it was just interesting man the way <laughs> they decided to live their life and i was yeah. just trying to like wake up in the morning and film you know they, they would come home be partying all night they would be installing strip pole strip poles downstairs in my house and i'm like dude you guys can't do this and then the pole rips out of the wall misses the main water line by like you know like a half an inch and like i'm um, just telling them you guys can't be doing this they say we're you know like one guy's saying he pays rent there he could do whatever he wants in his room and and you know it's like it's like that was the filmer and poopies was the talent and i was just like what is going on at parties i'm like upstairs like all night long and like guys just there's just no cares in the world oh no cares no uh, cares and and i i i could you know that i uh we were we were giggling we hung out with poopies and i asked him i said you know do you, ever, do you ever remember doing beer runs? And he goes, do, do, do I remember? Did he There's, tell you about the the one where he used to work at the um, the beer store? Or no. he got a job at like Ralph's or something? No. <laughs> and he got fired from Ralph's? 
Well, they were they were they figured out that they could go in the back and stack a bunch of alcohol, and at the end of the day, they just grab all the alcohol and they'd be gone. They'd be straight to the party. Like they were just <laughs> like they were stealing alcohol from Ralph's, but like it was like it was like the best job because I would work all day and they would just freaking just start stacking a bunch of stacking a bunch of liquor in the back and just 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 like I don't know just oh anywhere poopies goes, just picture that person that's in the worst situation you could possibly be in there's a fight breaks out poopies is somehow involved in it there <laughs> there there's like um like anything bad that could happen in a situation if someone it, bit a stripper last night poopies <laughs> yeah Let me see your no, teeth. Yeah. i got a great one so so we, we were in um and we were in japan and and poopies had an early flight and uh we were in like hokkaido snowboarding having a great time uh, well yeah so so we're like, we're like i thought about this other story so then i was like okay okay uh, poops, we'll drop you off at the train station, be at the house at, you know, 830. We'll drive you to the train station. It's 10 minutes away. Poopy shows up at uh, like 845. We're like, oh, my God, you're going to miss your thing. He's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Okay, let's go. Jumps. We jump in the car. We drive. Drop him off. Last person on the train or no, on the on the on the bus station or into the bus. And we're like, okay, bye, poops. This is what you got to do. You're going gotta to get off this uh, bus in an hour and then you're going to be at the airport and then you, you're, you're good. So Poopies takes the the bus. He gets off uh, at the airport. And he looks at he looks at his ticket and it says Tokyo. And he goes, "Shit, I was on the wrong bus." So then Poopies jumps on a train from um, <laughs> like the airport, like way up north. Jumps on a train and goes all the way down to Tokyo. Misses his flight. And then he's like, he's like calling me. He's like, I missed my flight. I'm like, what, what happened? He goes, well, I realized when I got to the other airport that my flight was leaving out of Tokyo. So I jumped on a train and then I took the bullet train all the way from like uh, Hokkaido all the way down to Tokyo. I'm like, dude, your flight was like left like <laughs> Hokkaido to Tokyo. Then you fly <laughs> home. He goes, oh shit. I didn't even realize that. I'm like, how do you like, just like catch a bullet train like eight hours away and expect to make your oh, flight? Oh shit. This says Tokyo. Yeah. <laughs> he we said we said to him we said to him what do you remember doing fear runs and he goes he goes yeah uh, do i remember he goes you know i i might have been a little late to stop doing beer runs <laughs> and i said how old was the last time you did beer run he goes i was 27 so we don't we gig or whatever that night we're having dinner and pete starts giggling i go what and he goes i'm 25 <laughs> he goes poop you too soon <laughs> runs two years after my age right now and he goes that's really old he goes can you imagine me doing a beer run and I go, not at all <laughs> yeah he's uh, the best man he's great so where where do you think you'll be in 10 years what do you think you'll be doing 10 years i mean hopefully have a family uh, yeah kids a grom um still still filming making fun videos uh, yeah hopefully have four or five surf schools and maybe kind of more Jamie O'Brien surf schools. Would yeah. Be great. I'd love to do like, like four or five of them. Cause like my goal is like, like, you know, like I want, I love surfing, right? It's a gift my father gave to me and I, I just love it every day and I love the ocean and being healthy and everything. But like, I'm like, how do I give the gift and keep giving it, but yet be a business, you know, yeah. and like, but have fun with it. You know, I love kids. I love serving kids. I love like everything about our surf school at Turtle Bay. And it's just fun. And, and, I want to open up, you know, four, maybe five, but be a face of the brand, not just a name. And, yeah. and I want to be able to go down there and, you know, you know, be there. I don't want to be like the guy that owns this place that never shows up. And I think, you know, that would just kind of fulfill my, f like just love of surfing and, uh, yeah, family live out in the North shore here and, uh, do a lot more fishing and try and figure out how to actually do a vacation. Right. <laughs> Fuck, cool. I will tell you this. I, I thank you because my vacation was perfect. I'm going out <laughs> on the road now until December. And I booked this based off of seeing some Instagram videos and then going, oh shit, that's him. I don't think I reached out. I don't know if I reached out. I think I was like, because I didn't want, oh, you were out of town. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't reach out to anyone. I didn't want it to be special. Mm. I wanted to pay for it. I wanted to, because I wanted to be able to suck and then not feel guilty. But, uh, my daughter is going off to college and we have a great memory of us surfing. We have great yeah, video. We have great awesome. pictures. It's just awesome. And, and so, and, and so thank you, man. Thank you for the fucking hours of entertainment you've given me. And yeah. thank you for teaching me how to surf. No worries. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's pleasure talking and, 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 you know, like to be honest, like I, I don't, I never really met you my whole life, but I just walked in the door. You didn't give me a second to, to talk. You just like, <laughs> you handed me a microphone. I oh, sat yeah. down on the couch, which is smart though, because usually you'll kind of start breaking into some stuff that well, you, you start just... talking about stuff and, and it get, becomes very natural. And then all of a sudden everyone's like, everyone's like, 
everyone's like, uh, oh, we should have saved that for the podcast. Yeah. Like we were yeah. sitting with uh, Cohen and Nate at the at, right after our workout, sitting under a tree, and we're just bullshitting. Yeah. And then and then uh, and then immediately, I was like, stop talking. We'll save this for our podcast. And yeah. then and then after that, we're having drinks over by the pool bar. <laughs> and fucking that's when all the gold started coming out oh my god i won't say it here yeah but like i didn't realize uh koa's family and i didn't re- like he just yeah. starts telling me stories and i'm like dude why didn't you tell me this like, <laughs> this is fucking like yeah. this is like fucking autobiography yeah. shit yeah and so it was really fascinating but it's the best is like when you go when you, old school when you'd go to do rogan you'd just be like hey and he'd be like come on and you just sit down yeah you smoke a joint and then immediately start talking i think it's just a better way to get going and, and here's the other thing is like like i i, I kind of already know you like i know you yeah so i like i do i follow a lot of your content so i go i know what i want to talk about but i got a question for you Shoot. is 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 what you see is what you get for you yeah like just yeah, yeah, meeting yeah. me knowing yeah. me like yeah. Because like you can meet some people and be like, oh my god, this person's like they're like they're like really oh, like they're they're I don't know maybe fake. No, like, you're, you know, you're, you're 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 like, you're very some, regular. Some people can just turn it on and be like, bam, and you're like, and then you go meet them and you're like, wait, is this that same person? Oh, that's me. Uh, when, <laughs> <laughs> when you meet me, you're like you're like okay, this is a little more than I thought I was. Getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, is he gonna shut the fuck up? <laughs> whoa no, this his shirt's off his shirt's <laughs> off he's in a speedo <laughs> motherfucker no man you're you're uh you know i i it's i feel like uh you uh, surfers in general are, are always a tad bit reserved and you guys are humble and i think the fact that you work in a place that humbles you regularly yeah is the reason but you are uh you are everything that i i thought i thought you'd be i was like thanks I was like, likewise yeah. yeah yeah no you're a fucking great dude man and and you are have like an immaculate uh, uh, reputation like that's everyone nice. when your name comes up people no one talks shit about you <laughs> and I, nice. that's yeah. the number one thing yeah yeah but yeah man i like what you do and i my only thing is i want to see more of it i want to see a podcast i want to see like i would fucking be fascinated to see what because it you know the thing about a podcast is, is people listening right now and they're a fly on the wall yeah they just want to hear they don't need it to be like perfect they're gonna love that they hear knocks four or five times and by the last one we're like what the fuck yeah yeah like, yeah. you know that's what makes it great but uh but yeah but thank you dude thank you for doing this and continued success i, I keep i just just keep doing what you're doing because i love watching it yeah i got a tr- couple of tricks up my sleeve and keep rolling and just trying to have fun trying to figure out everything and and uh yeah keep filming fuck yeah dude awesome. for the dream it was great. <laughs> thanks great bro podcast, yeah thanks,